Hello, I'm Nikki. And I'm Jess. She's the traumatized. And she's the abandoned. And And welcome to to our our podcast. podcast. Where we talk about true crime, spooky things, and everything in between. And today is the part two of our deep dive into the Kaylee Anthony case, aka Casey Anthony. If you missed last week, you might want to go check it out first. I'm not saying you have to, but this is part two. So we're kind of doing the end of it. So it might make more sense to listen to next week. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just suggesting. suggesting. It might make a little more sense, but yeah. So how was your week? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how do you think the week went? <laughs> uh, definitely uh, relaxing. After spending mm-hmm. an entire week watching every single thing about Casey Anthony, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think if you see a Casey Anthony or Kaylee Anthony thing on any streaming platform, just know I've probably watched it, including like a bunch of YouTube videos on it's behavior, amazing. her like behavior on like just the mm-hmm. case. Like mm-hmm. I have watched almost everything about this case it's amazing i appreciate the hell out of you for doing that too because i know it was a lot you had like what 12 pages of notes you said that's insane. I have tw- well handwritten i have 20 pages of notes on a word document it's crazy so absolutely crazy but yeah um how was your week <laughs> <laughs> uh back to work i guess we uh, we probably should have planned this better on talking about it. uh full disclosure we recorded this right after part one yes. so that's why we're like uh, uh uh same no i mean i'm gonna guess it's like back to work you know shooting for that martin luther king jr long day weekend kind of thing but other than that chill pretty good a chill week after the crazy holiday weekend or oh, holiday so weeks. many it's holiday weeks yeah. like ooh, i feel better we're putting That's that into the thing. universe yeah uh do you want to know a fun fact of the week i do okay so i'm going to tell you the toughest tongue twister in the english language are you ready probably not sixth sick sheiks six sheeps sick what sick six 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 sick sheiks six sheeps six sick <laughs> what i can't even understand what you're trying to say <laughs> oh six 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 <laughs> yeah, go on <laughs> now <laughs> yeah six six sheiks six sheeps sick that doesn't even make sense is that supposed to make a the sentence sixth, sick sheik six what's sheep is six what does that a word sheik mean? is like a sheik is like a like almost like a ruler or like a man in power right oh no i've never seen that word before in my life it's like it's an arabian leader sheep uh sick. a chief or a head of an arab tribe family or village so it's like okay. a sheik it's so, a leader so, in a Muslim so. con- community. Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Thank you for that. Yep. So that's the hardest, the, the toughest tongue twister in the English language. Yeah. I can't say it. So, obviously. Nope. <laughs> so, a lot of people who could. Alrighty. So, so we're so going to jump right into it. Part two. Yeah, we need to. Part two. Quick recap of part one. Yep. A toddler named Kaylee Anthony went missing. We went over the mm-hmm. day she was reported missing, the first 48 hours after that call of the case, mm-hmm. which ended in the mother, Casey Anthony, being arrested. Mm-hmm. We also went through the family background and dynamic situation going on. Creepy dad. The 31 days that Kaylee was missing and the recovery of the body and all the evidence that was collected because she was found dead and Casey Anthony was charged with murder. So now... We're going to go into the trial. It took three years for the trial to begin in 2011. Three years? Three years. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Yeah, so there are four charges, the most severe being first-degree murder with capital punishment, so the death penalty if found guilty. A plea deal was offered, and of course, Casey denied it, and opening statements began on June 6, 2011. Okay. In the prosecution's opening statement, they painted Casey as a party girl who wanted to be free from caring for her daughter. I mean, with the whole club scene and then the whole getting a tattoo while her daughter's missing... I feel like that's a pretty strong case. The prosecution's theory was that Casey knocked Kaylee out with chloroform and then placed three pieces of duct tape over Kaylee's mouth and put her in the bags, then disposed of her body in the woods. So, ooh, but chloroform just, it doesn't kill you, does it? It can. Oh. If too much. Because my thing was like, maybe she just like chloroformed her to like, go to sleep so i could go out and party and then accidentally killed her i don't i don't i don't want to think that she actually Mm. Uh, like purposely you know yeah i don't know like i said even though the evidence was mostly circumstantial the prosecution thought they had a slam dunk case but then the defense's opening statement would put the courtroom into shock Jose Bias was the main defense lawyer for Casey, and he was pretty much a nobody before this case, and then this case projected him into notoriety, and he would do a bunch of high-profile cases after this. Okay. Jose's opening statement brought forth an entire new theory, though he never denied that Casey knew what happened to her daughter. He instead said that the death of Kaylee had been nothing more than a tragic accident. He said that Kaylee had gotten out into the backyard and had drowned in the above ground pool while Casey was asleep. But then, okay, no, I'm not going to interrupt. I'm going to let you finish. Okay. Jose claimed that it was George who found the body and woke Casey up saying, look at what you did. Your mother will never forgive you for this. That's when the defense says George covered it up to protect his daughter. What? He did this by wrapping Kaylee up in trash bags and duct tape like he would do with the family pets when they passed away, then dropped the body in the woods. What? What? Oh my god. Another point in the defense's opening statement was that the man who found the body, the utility worker, had poked Mm -hmm. the skull with a stick. (laughs) <laughs> because he saw this like brown thing in the ground, poked it with a mm-hmm. stick, saw that it was a skull, but he actually poked the stick through the eyeball eye socket and like lifted it up off the ground to Ew! see what it was. Yeah. Okay. So the defense claimed that this made the entire crime scene contaminated and they couldn't use any evidence from it. Did that go through? No. Mm-hmm. Okay, He's good. just trying to say, oh, don't yeah. take any of this evidence because... Right. I mean, it's a good play by the defense attorney because that's, that's a big part of their case is mm-hmm. the crime scene. So that makes sense. And the last thing the defense claimed in their opening statement to explain away Casey's strange behavior and no emotion was because George Anthony had molested Casey from a young age. And he also accused Casey's brother of molesting her, too. Damn. Damn. I mean, damn. Mm. And, like, George and Cindy were in the courtroom when that was said. Because they were allowed to sit in the courtroom because they were family members Mm -hmm. of Kaylee. Um, But they were also witnesses. So the prosecution, like, took them aside, like, a day or two days before the trial and was like, hey, the defense is going to say you molested your daughter and you can't have any reaction to it. How are you not supposed to have a reaction to that? Right? How are you? What do you? Okay. So the first witness on the stand was actually George. And of course, the prosecution, first thing they had to ask him because it was brought up in the opening statements, did you molest your daughter? And he denied all claims. Oh, my God. Everyone was expecting Jose Bias then to cross-examine him about the claims. Right. That he made in his opening statement. But instead, Bias decided to ask him about his 2009 suicide attempt. Shortly after Kaylee was found, George drove to a different city and went to a hotel, heartbroken about Kaylee, and 
possibly heartbroken about the fact that Casey might have ha been the one responsible for mm -hmm. it. He took a bunch of pills and drank alcohol. And in his note, he said, I needed to go be with Kaylee. I just... The defense, however, used the suicide as attempt as a sign of George's guilt for his part in the cover up. Mm. I too, man, I wonder if he's not the dad. Like he's not the dad. How do you know? DNA tests were done. They were compared to George. They were and compared to the and the brother. I thought you said they weren't done. They were. Oh. Okay. All right. Well, then I'm a little less grossed out by him. But still, it's weird behavior and I don't like it. The prosecution would then go into their 31 days painting Casey as this party girl. And then they went through the car evidence and the infamous Google searches. Mm -hmm. Then there was the duct tape. Experts would go back and forth on whether the duct tape was on the skull or near the skull. Okay. Bias would pick apart the evidence and use the term fantasy forensics. Ooh, to like make it so they mm -hmm. could create their own story. Okay. Mm -hmm. With okay. Dr. Voss's testimony, the guy with about the compound, the trunk air decomposition stuff. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. remember that from mm -hmm. the first part? With Dr. Voss's testimony, Baez would argue that he was not qualified because his doctorate was not in chemistry. But That's some Amber Heard shit right there. But Dr. Voss was an anthropologist and his work was legitimate. He worked at the famous and respected body farm in Knoxville, Tennessee, studying this. Right. And if you remember in my first part... I also said that an FBI lab found the same results of right. evidence that decomposition was in the trunk. And I'm sure they used that when they went to question the the legitimacy. They used that. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. I just have <laughs> bullet points from the trial. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The defense expert was there to dispute the chemical compound stuff. So... Dr. Voss was on the prosecution, and then they had a a different expert on the defense side to kind of dispute the whole compound, chemical compound stuff. I didn't want to get into the nitty gritty. Right. But in one of the shows, an interview where the defense expert was interviewed, he agreed with the fact that there was evidence that would have led him to the fact that there may have been a dead body in the car. But he wasn't allowed to testify to that. He was only allowed to testify to the chemistry compounds. Right. Uh, okay. He even more so agreed with this when he heard about the cadaver dogs hitting positively right. on the trunk. Right, 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 right. Because in his line of work, nothing has worked better than cadaver dogs mm -hmm. in decomposition. It's just a proven fact. And oh my gosh, in one of the documentaries, I wanted to punch my screen because one of the defense lawyer people was like, the cadaver dogs were never there. What? And the lady's like, no, they were there. And he's like, well, they didn't hit positive. And she's like, no, it's a fact. Yes, they did. That they hit. Oh my God. I wanted to scream. I was like, this oh my dude God. is so dumb. Like, oh, so dumb. he's like, I don't believe in cadaver dogs. They're not reliable. I'm like, what? <laughs> Stop what the fuck do you mm. talking, please? Yeah. It goes back to like the Nexium defense attorney where they're just like completely in denial. It's like, oh, you poor child. You poor, poor thing. Oh my gosh. So next, an expert testified that the chloroform could have come from other things such as cleaning products. So the chloroform is like a very common chemical. And the defense expert was like, oh, it could have been from anything. Who knows? What do you mean anything? <laughs> do you just carry around chloroform in your trunk? Because I don't. Nope. As for the chloroform searches, Cindy claimed that she was the one who did the searches, even though it was proven that she was at work by time cards and her computer station. So either Why would she do that? She was at work or somebody was using her credentials at work during Why would the she searches. Do that? But her claim 
is that the dog had eaten some parts of a bamboo plant and she was worried that he was like poisoned or whatever. She tried to search the word chlorophyll and Google suggested the word chloroform. They're prompting her to click on the word chloroform. Why are they still? I mean, they do have a history of defending her like with the whole graduation thing. But like, I think why? I think one thing to put in perspective here is if she's found guilty of first degree murder, it's the death penalty. She's going to the chair or the needle, I guess. They just just wanted maybe she wanted to I don't know. But if she murdered her fucking daughter. That's one thing I don't understand. I don't understand parents who protect their children who murder. I don't either. Which is, we can put that as a uh, chaotic chat that we have a discussion about. Oh, that is because I don't understand that. that. I think that is very much part of the John Bunny Ramsey case too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Weirds me out. Mm -hmm. Like I don't care if like I mean obviously I would care, but like I'll visit you in prison. If you do something, you know what? I'll I'll make the trip every weekend to come say hi to you. But I'm not gonna defend your actions if you murder somebody. I'm not gonna. Sense. I'm not gonna. A child. S- yeah. A, a three year old defenseless child. Yeah. Come on. Who is your granddaughter? I don't know. Nope. I don't uh-uh. like this family at all. Mm-hmm. No. So bias also attacks the evidence of the duct tape or lack thereof. He pointed out that there was no fingerprints or DNA, nor did anyone look for those things. Well, here's Mm -hmm. an explanation. The FBI didn't look for those things because they knew they wouldn't be there. The duct tape had been exposed to the elements for months in Mm -hmm. the Florida humidity and flooding. Mm -hmm. And there was just no way there was going to be that type of evidence on that. Okay. Okay. The defense also had Dr. Spitz testify, and he took the autopsy apart bit by bit. So Dr. Spitz is a very famous... Is he an anthropologist? I don't know. He's done so many cases where he's testified at court. He's very renowned, and he's usually always works for the defense, and... It was commented that he basically hates when shoddy work is done, and that's why. Right, that's fair. He does it. Okay. Uh I do, I can't, I couldn't find any evidence of this, but I specifically remember like a year or two ago where something had came out about Dr. Spitz basically just doing all of this for the money. Not Mm. really necessarily being accurate, but that's a rumor, and I can't remember where I heard or read that from but i definitely remember his name being like controversial in okay testifying so you i said would, he only works for the defense right yeah so i would mm. just take things with a grain of salt when it comes to him but i do agree i think the investigators half-assed it and right. the medical examiner dr g she's very adamant about that this is a homicide this is a homicide and i'm mm. not an expert but the old she determined it as a homicide because of the duct tape and because Mm. of outer facts for me from what i kind of know when determining how someone has died you kind of should only look at the bones at the Mm. body if that makes sense yeah for signs of trauma, what have you, because right. there was no trauma on the bones and the but, fact that the body had already decomposed, I think the death should have been undetermined in the very least. Because I say that okay. because mm-hmm. you can't positively know for sure how she died. You don't have her organs, right. so you don't know if she's right. suffocated you don't right. know right. if she right. drowned right. Right. Okay. That's i fair. think the medical examiner did jump to conclusions and okay. be based on the evidence surrounding the child's remains and not okay. just on the child's remains that's a personal opinion you can disagree with me i think oh, that's fair that it just i don't know okay I like your personal opinion. <laughs> I mean, you you did research for an entire week. I feel like you're entitled and to your own opinions. Every single interview that she's in, she points out the duct tape, the duct tape, 
what accidental death has duct tape like and i get it i get it that the duct tape was there i get that the duct tape could have possibly been over her mouth but that to me is not enough evidence to say this is a homicide right so i don't know she was just very she's very aggressive in her mm -hmm. her tone like no this is a homicide i'm like i don't know i don't know is it yeah because the evidence was so circumstantial and the fact that the prosecution couldn't paint a clear picture of the crime, which is another mm, thing. Yeah. The prosecution's opening statement was over two hours long. Opening statement. That's a that's math. That's huge. The judge had a pause in the middle of it because he could tell the statement. jury was like not listening right i mean that's an opening statement that's supposed to be very like it's like the a point. summary go and then we're gonna right. go into it no she right. like the prosecutor like laid out every single thing that they probably covered in the trial in the opening mm -hmm. statement exactly and then that's you have jose bias on the other end and he's a storyteller he's charming he's mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. just this personality and Jose Bias was able to turn reasonable doubt into reason to doubt. Ooh, that was good. Thank you, last podcast on the left. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm like going to use that line. <laughs> that was a really good shout out. That was smooth. I like it. But it's very true. And also the fact that the Florida swamp basically ate the evidence. A shocking part is that Jose Bias never spoke about the molestation allegation again in the trial. Throughout the entire thing, he said it in the opening statement and then nothing, not a single word. I wonder if it's because it wasn't based on fact. That was for a shock factor to throw people off. And then, he, but he knew it wasn't like legit, maybe. I don't know. And he was not allowed to bring it up again in the closing arguments because... Again, he didn't present anything during right. the trial. So the judge is like, no, you can't say that. You didn't prove anything. Like, go away. He also never put forth any evidence of the drowning scenario, except for one picture during the closing argument. And the picture was Kaylee opening the back sliding door by herself. But it also, again, it's not his job to prove his case. He's just there to He's provide to doubt. Provide doubt. Exactly. On July 4th, 2011, the case was given to the jurors, and in less than 11 hours, the verdict was returned. 11? Wow. Can you guess what it was? I think I know what it was. I have a side question. Mm -hmm. So say, okay, so the defense attorney is trying is trying to flip it on the dad. So say mm -hmm. that, so whatever. I, it, and then there, she turns around, she's like, okay, well, now I want to press charges against my dad. Because he's a defense attorney, he wouldn't be able to, like, represent her. She would have to get a prosecutor. Here's a pros the thing. She'll never press charges. She has not, to this day, pressed charges against her father or her brother for the allegations she said about them. Oh, so that's so weird. So, yeah, and we'll, and we'll talk about that more in a little bit as well. Okay. So, on the charges of first-degree murder... Aggravated child abuse, aggravated manslaughter of a child. She was all found not guilty. Wow. Even like child. Oh, go ahead. I'll get into it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like, Casey, hold on. however, was found guilty of lying to the cops. She was okay. sentenced to four years in prison, but because she had okay. spent three years in waiting for the trial and for good behavior, Casey was released 10 days after the trial. Hmm. Okay. So I guess I can kind of explain it now. So the judge, uh, Judge Perry, who was mm -hmm. presiding over this case, has been interviewed in a lot of things. And he, uh, there was actually one show that I watch is Abrams versus Nancy Grace or versus Grace. You know who Nancy Grace is? Yes. And Nancy then Grace do you know who, I, I can't remember his first name, but Abrams. Live PD. Live PD. He's the guy who, who the main guy who talks on Live PD gotcha okay but yeah so on their okay. show they brought on a former juror 
Casey's jail friend and the judge. And they they kind of go friend. they kind of go at the judge hard. But when the juror came on and the juror was like explaining things, they would turn to the judge and be like, "So by the sounds of it, is that the jurors didn't understand their job because the juror said that, you know, first degree murder just didn't cut it. And Nancy Grace or one of the two was like, well, there were other charges. And he's like, we didn't know that. And they looked at the judge and he's like, they should have known that. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, what do you mean? It's, what do you mean they didn't know that? Like it's, I don't understand. It's literally when this jury person was talking, it was literally like he had no idea what was going on. And like well, that's terrible. That sounded like it was across the board, like the whole jury room. Well, the judge had stated, you know, it's not my job to tell the jury. It kind of is. So it, it's his job <sighs> to give him the jury instructions. Okay. Right. It's not his job to tell the prosecution to give them extra jury instructions because the prosecution can be like if you don't think it's first okay. degree murder then it could be this okay. so they were okay. just given these instructions but not really uh -huh. explained okay that was kind of like that was supposed to be the prosecution's job to explain okay. you know these are the different types of charges you need to okay. figure out you know what we have and that's why i say i think this the prosecution botched it i think the investigation was slightly botched it it's one of those cases that's just infuriating because it mm. wasn't done right right and that's so fucking hard <laughs> yeah so let's go into the theories we all are, already know the prosecution's theory they mm -hmm. think she chloroformed kaylee put duct tape on her mouth to suffocate her wrapped her in a laundry Ugh. bag and and garbage bags and tossed her in the woods the defense's theory again was she drowned in the pool her father covered it up tossed her in the woods mm. then we have the zanny the nanny theory right like where did zanny even come in like what okay or what we would like to call the xanax theory this okay. theory suggests that Casey was giving Kaylee Xanax. Hence, Zanny the nanny. Maybe when she would, like, go out and party and stuff. Zanny. Oh, no. And maybe she accidentally gave her too much. <gasps> oh, no. And she passed away. Casey panicked, put her in the trunk for a few days, and then finally dumping the body. Oh, my God. Casey would have had easy access to the drug Xanax because of the new friend group that she was in, the boyfriend, and then they were like nightclub DJs and, okay. and, and, and partiers and stuff. So it would have been easy for her to have access to this. Yikes. So a side note, um, something that came out after the trial had finished. So when the mm -hmm. person who investigated the computer... This person didn't search the Firefox search history. They only searched mm. the Internet Explorer. And remember, this is in 2008. So who okay. most people may not have known that there were other search Fair. engines Fair. I was available. about to be very judgmental, but you're yeah, right. You you're right. Miss Firefox yeah, user. <laughs> uh, but Firefox was a search engine that Casey used specifically. Between uh. activity... <laughs> On MySpace and Facebook, there was a search for foolproof suffocation on the day that Kaylee went missing. Full, foolproof suffocation. Foolproof not... suffocation. Jeez, what? How do you explain that? How do you explain that? It was said that the search specifically got erased in the hours that the detectives had dropped casey back at her parents house before <gasps> she was Come arrested on. what do you mean how is that how is that not so fucking obvious what do you how do you this search information never made it into the hands of the prosecution why and because it wasn't found till after the trial the investigators never found this you know who found this? Two internet sleuths that asked if they could have this because of the whole sunshine law. And they found this search on their own. How did two internet sleuths do a better job than the investigators? 
right? Like, so frustrating. It's so annoying. So, back to the theories. We're going to talk about the judge, Belvin Perry, who was the judge on the case. His theory was that Casey did not intentionally kill Kaylee. I mean, that's kind of how I'm leaning. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to assume that she actually murdered her. Like, I think it's just me hoping the best out of people. But like, I could, I could see her accidentally killing her daughter. I can. Mm -hmm. uh, people leave their kids in the car, you know, if, if she was a partier wanting to just, uh, Z even Xanax, like giving her like a half a Xanax for getting and then giving her another one. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like. I could see that happening. The whole suffocation thing on purpose. Who? That's just. It's hard. That that's like that's murder. That's mm -hmm. ending a life of an innocent human. And that's that's. I'm not saying accidental murder is better. <laughs> I think they're both still very bad. Yes. I just it's easier. It's an easier pill for me to swallow than like legitly like duct taping your daughter's mouth shut and yeah having her suffocate you know what i mean mm -hmm. i don't know so he thinks she used chloroform as a way to sedate kaylee much like the xanax theory and gave her too much and she passed away the judge pointed out in mm -hmm. an interview that chloroform actually used to be used as an anesthetic in the civil war so he thinks she panicked when the child died and put her in the trunk this is the mm -hmm. part that fucking shocked me the okay. judge also made a point. He mentioned that maybe the molestation allegations were mentioned as a way to discredit George to the jury because the last thing Jose, well, not the last, but Jose stated in his opening statement that George molested Casey and the first person to go on the stand directly after that opening statement was Ooh. George Anthony. And See, never that makes sense to me. Never once again was the molestation claim spoken about. That and that's that's actually kind of what I said. I was mm -hmm. like, to me, the fact that he brought that out was like a shock factor. Mm -hmm. Or like you to discredit the first witness. That makes a lot of sense. Cause now in your mind as a juror, all you're thinking is, oh my God, he might have molested her while he's sitting there giving a testimony. So mm -hmm. it's not a bad, it's not a bad move. So, George Anthony, uh, in an interview, George kind of said the same thing as the judge. He believes that Casey gave Kaylee something too much. She passed away. Casey panicked, etc. Mm -hmm. Cindy Anthony is freaking lost in the sauce. This woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anywho, she's just lost in the sauce. I'm going to leave she's... it there. I don't want to... <sighs> like, what do you mean by that? So... During the trial, she basically prayed to God. And that's not what I'm eyeballing. I don't want to offend anybody. But she basically said, if this is justice, like, show me justice for Kaylee. And obviously, Casey was not found guilty. So Cindy thinks that was justice. When it wasn't because mm. the trial and the investigation was so fucked. So mm -hmm. it, it's not... <sighs> mm -hmm. She's just lost in the sauce. And she's, I got she's you. naive. And she... I think she doesn't want to believe it. I, th I think mm. at this point she doesn't want to. And she was just right. trying to find the excuse was to like say, okay, she didn't do it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, she doesn't want to believe it. Yeah. And then there is Casey's story. Oh, uh, at the peacock. They're on the peacock thing. We are at the peacock uh, documentary. Okay. Okay. On November 29th, 2022, Peacock streaming service released a documentary series called Casey Anthony, Where the Truth Lies. Mm. Uh, so over a decade after the case is when Casey decides to sit down for an in front of the camera interview. Mm -hmm. Two questions went through my mind. Number one, why did it take over 10 years for her to sit down and tell her truth of what happened? Right. Second question. How in the world does she expect us to believe anything she says when literally every single know. word She's out of her liar. mouth mm -hmm. was a lie? Mm -hmm. Like, what makes you think we're going to think you're telling the truth now? She gives me narcissist vibes. You just shouldn't have come out in the first place. Just should have yep. just let it be. Yeah. Let your daughter rest. Mm -hmm. So we're going to I'm not going to go over the entire three episodes that I did watch twice. 
oh once when it first came out and again bless you this week because i needed the information again insane so as you can probably guess this documentary series has caused a lot of uproar in the nation Mm -hmm. because nobody's gonna believe a word she says literally nothing they were so surprised peacock did it they were so mad that peacock gave her a platform yeah that's what i'm saying i'm actually surprised peacock did it i mean it's money they get in the views on it like yeah i guess so before i kind of go into this as i was watching like youtubers cover this case and and body language experts cover the case and stuff one thing that kept people kept kind of commenting on was that the interviewer seemed to be leading the questions for Casey. Uh, yeah. And in some parts, it just felt staged or Ew. rehearsed. So at the beginning, Casey is asked, why talk to me now when you're not getting creative control? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> first of all why did you feel the need to ask that question you're trying to you're trying to tell us that she doesn't have creative control right that's so weird that's that didn't need to be asked and here's the thing casey no doesn't have creative control over the editing and the production but what she could have control over is which questions she would be willing to answer in which question she right. wouldn't be able to. Right, right, right. But her answer is to listen to her side of the story and to make her daughter proud. <laughs> <laughs> Pat McKenna was a lead investigator for the defense, and after the trial, that is who Casey moved in with. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> Wait, would you like me to say that again? Yes. Pat. Sorry. McKenna was a lead investigator for the defense. So the defense hires their own investigators to dig up stuff. Right. And after the trial, that is who Casey moved in with. And she currently still works for him as his research assistant. I would also like to state in here, just uh, squeeze in the middle. There were rumors that Jose Baez and her had a intimate relationship. I mean, I wouldn't fucking doubt it at this point speculation rumors Mm -hmm. not confirmed Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just showing that in there she states that the only person who matt okay (laughs) these next two paragraphs get me so riled up oh no she so casey states that the only person who matters to her to this day is her daughter but then she'll she gets angry and emotional When she says she has to defend herself still to this day that she did nothing wrong and then she makes a statement about how no one should have to tell her to get over her daughter being gone then again she attaches a statement with emotion about her being blamed for it so in these two statements Mm -hmm. she puts in my opinion what she thinks she wants the audience to hear like i miss my daughter mm -hmm. and then she puts what she wants to say right and i'm getting blamed for it still right and i absolutely hated those two statements when she said them yeah i was like what the fuck casey (sighs) admits that she is a convicted liar because she is okay so then everybody knows that (laughs) she is asked what her relationship is to truth and lying is today This is her exact words. I'm a little too honest. I'm blunt. I'm direct. Almost painfully so. Who says that? Mm. People trying to excuse bad behavior. And also, like, I don't care who you are. Everyone lies. Whether they're little white lies, whatever lies, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like everyone still lies in a day to day basis. So why are you trying to overstate the fact that you're too honest? Because she's trying to overcompensate for her not honesty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Along with this, her employer, Pat, is asked if she's ever lied to him while working with him and stuff. And he says Uh, no. uh. And I'm just like, how does somebody who 
every single word out of their mouth was a lie just stop cold turkey just like stop they don't lying they like, find god <laughs> <laughs> i don't think she found god <laughs> i think she found a not guilty verdict right oh god <sighs> So yeah, exactly. God. When asked about the 911 call, Casey says there's no emotion. The interviewer is like, it's weird. Casey agrees. Mm. Yeah, it's weird. And then she does like a mouth block, which behavior analysts kind of deem kind of like stopping yourself from saying right. something you want to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or even covering a lie. Mm hmm. And she says she was numb. Then Casey says that all of her strange behaviors was from suppressing trauma. And this is, again, where she makes the claims about her father and brother. This time, though, she says that her father actually raped her and her brother just molested her. Her brother never raped her, but it was close enough. So... Okay. In one of the seemingly staged scenes, Casey is asked, how did you sleep? And she said, there is no such thing as good sleep. Which, this is a straight contradiction to when she was interviewed. Um, I don't know if it was right after her release or what. It was like a recorded in interview. It wasn't like mm -hmm. face to face. And she says, oh, I sleep, I sleep just fine at night. So do you sleep just fine at night or She's is there no liar. such thing as good sleep? Casey also makes a brand new claim that she had been raped and that's how she became pregnant. So I don't want to discredit anybody about their claims. Right. But that's, for a, me, that's what sucks. Yeah. For me. So you were raped by your father, molested by your brother, and then raped again when you were 18. Uh, like, I, I don't mean, know. I don't. I'm not saying I don't believe her, but at the same time, like. I'm taking this information with a grain of salt. Right. At because, the end of yeah, the day. Because you can't discredit. But And like my main question, and she mentions it in this thing, like there's no statute of limitations in Florida. I can charge my father with what he did to me. So why don't you? Exactly. Why haven't if, if you charged him? Feel, if you genuinely, exactly. If you've exactly. been through these 10 years of therapy where you can finally talk about this now, why haven't you charged him? Or in, in the least, personally sued him because you can do that too. Right. You can sue in a civil court. You can sue him for doing the things that he did to you if he did those things. I it just it doesn't I, make any sense. It doesn't to me. It's, it just <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we're gonna go into Casey's story, which, mind you, is completely different than what her defense told her to, said what? in court. So, this is now putting into question: was the defense lying or is right. Casey lying now? Right. So here's what she says. The day Kaylee went missing, Casey woke up and got Kaylee breakfast. Casey wasn't feeling great, so her and Kaylee laid down with the TV on. And this is the strange part. Casey goes into significant detail about how she is a light sleeper, how she has the bed set up against the wall with the pillows mm, so Kaylee wouldn't of... fall out, how the TV was on, how the mm -hmm. door was shut. She goes into all these little details. A lot of little details hiding. So then she mm -hmm. says she fell asleep. Casey says then that she was woken up by her father shaking her, asking her where Kaylee is. And this is another weird thing. She makes a comment about the TV still being on. Like, if you're looking for your child, why are you why noticing you that the notice TV that? is still on? As soon as you're woken up being like, where's your daughter? You'd be like, like uh, I don't know. Where is she? Oh, but the TV's on. But the TV's on. Casey, um, then Casey claims that her daughter of barely three years old apparently would never leave the room without telling casey even to go to the bathroom you tell me a three -year -old? of a three-year-old a three-year-old not just getting up and wandering around the house they do it all the fucking time i mean our toddler 
when he was two and three, would get into the fucking fridge and dump out the entire gallon of milk on the oh, floor yeah. while oh, we were yeah, like that. going to the bathroom or or mm-hmm. just working like right next. Like toddlers are sneaky and they move around and they don't have the mental comprehension to be like, I can't do that. You know what I mean? Like toddlers Mm -hmm. are all about learning and they learn by experiencing. So experiencing, they're going to explore. Right. There's no three-year-old that goes, hey, mommy, I'm going to go do something else right now. Right. No, they just do it. I don't know. And here's another, like after that whole thing, she says this statement word for word. She would never just leave me there. I don't understand that statement. Right. What? Again just leave you there sleeping i don't know like she's a toddler how would she have the comprehension to like take you you know I what know. i mean like i do it's Unless just a really attached really to it, strange but. phrasing of words she would never just leave me kaylee knew that she wasn't allowed to be in the house by herself is what casey would say again <sighs> What two-year-old is going to have the comprehension to not wander around? Like, I'm so... This makes no sense. Makes no sense. Uh, really, it's it's making no sense to me. Yeah. I... I don't know. This, to me, just screams like she lost some attention and wanted to get it back and made it... Try to make everything again about her. Because mm-hmm. it's always been about her and her mm-hmm. loss. And how she was stuck in jail. Mm -hmm. And that should be everyone's top priority. Like, ugh. So then Casey starts looking through the house and goes outside. She's trying to figure out where her daughter is. And when she gets around the house, she claims she saw George holding Kaylee and she was soaking wet. So Okay. And here's another statement that rubbed me the wrong way. This is what she said. I can see him standing there. With her in his arms. Which to me, I hear, I kind of hear it as like, I can see him as in I can imagine him. I can Uh, picture him there. Rather than like, if you're recounting, if you're recounting him doing something, would you Uh more or less say, I saw him standing there holding (gasps) my daughter. You know what I mean? Interesting, yeah. No, absolutely. Instead, like, she I says, can I him. can see him. As in, mm-hmm. I can picture him doing this. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily, I saw him do this. So I just, I thought that was an interesting thing to say. Mm-hmm. He handed Kaylee to Casey, according to her, and like told her it's your fault. Your mother is going to be so upset with you, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then Casey said that George took Kaylee and that Casey has no idea where they went because she sat outside for so long distraught on the ground so then she knew who did she knew what happened to her the whole time she claims that she thought Kaylee was still okay until the body was found so this whole documentary honestly is a smear campaign against George let's be real That's what it is. So that's her story. She makes comments about how people want answers to questions. So as she's finishing this story, she's like, and I know people want to know the answers. Why didn't I call 911? Why didn't I do this? Why did I do that? Mm -hmm. She never once actually answers those questions. She just lists them and then like doesn't cover them. (laughs) (laughs) These were all the important questions that people asked me, and we're going to move on now. <laughs> it was literally like, I'm pretty sure if you'll watch like a behavioral an- analysis of this part, it's basically she says the questions so that you think that she covered the questions when she actually didn't. Mm. It's like showing you a oh, bow yeah, yeah, without yeah, yeah, actually yeah. giving you the Giving bone. it to you. Yeah, I feel like I'll keep bringing it back just because it was the most recent case that was like really big. Amber Heard did a lot of that. Be no, like, oh, there, yeah, there is a lot the of thing. comparison between these two cases, honestly. Uh, that Because she did the same thing. She was like, oh, yeah, this was discussed 
and moving on and it's like okay well, wait we didn't actually but, talk about wait it wait a minute <laughs> but wait, hold on can we circle back around to that because you didn't actually answer my question yeah so yeah the the basically the rest of the show kind of goes into more of the accusations against her family the case a point that she makes in in one of the parts is that her parents did many interviews and she said it so disgustingly like she was pissed they off did interviews for yeah. money and i'm um, like i can't go through back through so everything that i yeah. watched but yeah. i specifically remember that uh casey got almost two hundred thousand dollars selling kaylee's photos to the media or photos what? to the media so that was a little hypocritical she has been mm -hmm. paid for photos and thing. stuff yeah so not only that but she was she was so pissed in those videos and the in the calls that we were listening to earlier she's she kept bringing up like i saw you on the news like i saw you on the news like oh yeah you, know, you know what all my over the news. involvement is mom no like oh you God. know my involvement i saw you like <laughs> When they asked about the searches on the day of for foolproof suffocation, the computer was logged in with Casey's profile. Mm -hmm. So literally the interviewer reads off that it was Casey's account that was logged into the computer when those searches were done. And mm -hmm. Casey claims it was not her. Just flat out says it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Caught her on the counter. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> believe you as much as I believe Shaggy Casey. <laughs> she claimed that everyone in the house had everyone's password, which if you're a 20 year old woman like living your life, would you ever give your parents no. your password to your computer? No. Like why even have different profiles at that point? Yeah. So there, the claim is that George is the one that did these searches. But George was at work at 3.01. The searches were done at 2.59. Wait, and these are still the searches about They're the... They're not 2.59, but 2.50-ish area. This is the chloroform searches? No, this is the full suffocation search. Right, that one. Okay, cool. Because so, I was like, mom checked out too, right? right. She was at work. But yeah. She was at work doing the other one. Okay. But so the searches were at like 2.52 p.m. or something like that. And George was at work by 3.01, 3.02 p.m. ish in that area. There is like a 15 window span of this. George had already left for work. But Casey claims that from his work, from the home to his work was less than 10 minutes. But mm -hmm. I, I personally don't believe it. I think Casey searched that. There, she was the only person who was able to because mm. George okay. was at work by right, at least exactly. 3.05 right, right, right. at the latest. But Casey claims, oh, like, where was his cell? Because George called the house at like 3.05 from work. OK, so there's proof that he was there by right. this certain time. I'm not sure if right. it was 3.05, but it was somewhere in there. And Casey's like, oh, well, um what are georgia's cell phone records and they're like we don't have them and she's like well there that's your answer that's your gotcha moment we don't have his cell phone records <laughs> that like, was it that that's was your gotcha it. <laughs> jesus christ that was casey's gotcha moment uh but i i mm, i don't think so i think mm -mm. i think she was the one that did the searches especially when the fact that those searches were deleted during the time right. that she was right. there. When she got released. Like, my dude, could you be more guilty? And like I said, the last episode is basically a hate campaign against George. It's a smear campaign. Really? Painting him as the oh murderer God. and but, a pedophile. Okay, but... Okay, so when did that come out? When did she do this This interview? This interview? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It came out in November of this year. Or, well, okay, of last like, year. Any charges? Any charges? No. No? No charges? Interesting. And Why? What, what they would do, they <laughs> took clips out of context and made it seem like he was making, like having creepy moments instead of like of a grieving grandfather. So they picked snippets from Ugh. the funeral service of him saying something completely out of context other than like a grandfather just, you know, remembering 
what she smelled like when she came in to play, which is kind of weird, but (laughs) (laughs) it's very weird. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He gives you really creepy vibes. He really does. does. I don't know. I guess I didn't get creepy vibes from him. But also, like, he is also, like, lies a lot. I don't, I think the whole freaking family is weird at this point. Yeah, I don't, they got weird vibes. And I don't, I don't believe anything any of them say. So, in summary, Casey claims that her father molested Kaylee and killed her for whatever reason, and that part is kind of unclear, and then he got rid of the body. So That's she so claims weird. that he he molested Kaylee and then killed her, whatever reason. She never explains what? why he would have killed her. What? Because if you're if you're a molester, you want to keep that your victim around so you can keep right. molesting them, right? Oh, why would God. you randomly kill them and then try to cover it? I don't know. This is making me nauseous, or it might have been it's... chicken. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you wondering, I have a stomach bug and I tried to eat a little something, so it might be the chicken that I was eating. I don't know. Oh my gosh. Or I'm the story. It, it probably is the story. Oh. So the last thing that we're kind of going to cover is the backlash of the show. So Cardi B, the host no, of The View. Wait, and- what? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Cardi B, the hosts of the show The View, and Nancy Grace were among many of those who publicly denounced the series. Oh, Nancy, okay. Nancy Grace, who turned down an invitation to participate in the project, mm-hmm. does not consider it a documentary. She turned it down because she's like, can I ask what I want to ask? And Peacock was like, no. And she's like, then I'm not going to do it. Then I don't want to do it. Good for her. Stating, when I hear the word documentary, I think of something that is truthful. (laughs) And that's what she told the Hollywood reporter. (laughs) Well, is she wrong? (laughs) (laughs) Guardian critic Rebecca Nicholson called the series a soft focus vanity project for a world-class narcissist ah see i'm telling she gives me even from even from day fucking one she gave me narcissist vibes so bad the public outcry against where the truth lies actually surprised alexandra dean who was the director what do you mean it surprised you? What did you think people are gonna like watch this and That's be like, oh my reaction? Casey Anthony, you're right. I totally believe you now. What did you expect? <laughs> I could honestly see them putting it out. You know, like they said any publicity is good a good public you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I could kind of see it like just for the hype of people being like, Oh my god, did you see this documentary? And then mm-hmm. everyone go over to Peacock just to watch it because she's mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I could kind of see that. But if he genuinely believed this is going to be like a good thing. Yeah, no, she, <laughs> my dude, she said that she approached the Anthony docuseries the same way she did earlier nonfiction projects as a journalist. So she claims that she did all the investigative work. She, you know, investigated all the things that she had interviewed from both sides, but if you watch the documentary, it is from start to finish a smear campaign of George That's Anthony. That's so disgusting. Judge Belvin Perry, best judge ever, in my opinion, commented okay. on it. His comments were, one question I have is why would George, who clearly loved this child beyond measure, take a simple drowning of a child, not call 911 to see if she could be resuscitated? Then duct tape the body of right? the child and place it in garbage bags and dump it right? in a swamp-like area, he asked. That's Belvin so also sense. said, no normal human being does that. George was a former police officer. Right? Casey's always been one for dramatic flair. Her claims are just not believable at all. <laughs> And that, that was the judge's opinion Jesus on the Christ. series. Uh, according mm. to a source in the Anthony family's inner circle, George Anthony is devastated at the claims. He's outraged and appalled. The, inner si- the insider told People magazine, which who knows if this is actually true, but this is what I found. Right. It wasn't 
true in 2011 and it's not true now. He denies it all and will continue to not to deny it all until his final breath. Which another thing I'd like to point out is when people like are pedophiles and molesters, right? They tend to have more victims. Correct. That's true. Unless caught. Well, all right. Flip side of that, you know, if if Casey was the first and then uh-huh. Kaylee was the second, you know, he could just run out of just because there aren't any other known victims. Uh-huh. There could be, you know, like uh, yeah. devil's advocate. I'm not yeah, saying yeah, yeah. that's what I believe. Uh, I do think he. I think it, I think it's fucking weird that he was down there when she was giving birth. I think that's really weird. That's I weird. don't I don't like some of the behaviors and what the way he was saying things. It just made me feel super icky. So like I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then I have my final thoughts. I mm. I feel like the investigation and the prosecution fucked this case up. And yeah. It, it's annoying. Mm-hmm. I honestly think that there's only one person responsible for Kaylee's death. And I think we all know who that one person is, but I don't mm-hmm. want to say it out loud because don't want to get we sued. All we all know. But I agree with the fact that the investigators had tunnel vision, that they could have at least done the work to eliminate George as a suspect completely. Right. They could right. have done that little bit of extra work to to just prove it solidly right and the prosecution did not do a good enough job explaining to the jury how to be a fucking jury that's actually insane and at the same time how to explain the evidence in a way that the jury could comprehend it right and the fact that the google searches were completely missed but those google searches are the things that solidify my thinking that there is only one person who is involved in this situation that's my final thoughts. I don't yeah, know if you have any I, other ones. I mean, no, same, same. The entire, the entire premise of the fact that your daughter is missing for thirty days, <laughs> like that to me, there is no defense. There's no defense. And if you knew, I don't like. I can't. If you knew your dad did something, I don't. I don't know. Like maybe they were just covering for each other. But she knew, and it was her daughter but and then she but, ha, okay 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 so if okay so if if her theory happened if her theory happened mm-hmm. and so she, okay no because she thinks she was still how did she think she was still okay i don't know i'm i'm trying not to get too bad she wanted it, to believe what her father then, was okay, telling her what what i'm going off of is she went and got a fucking tattoo that said bit beautiful life if you knew your daughter was missing how could you sit there and get a tattoo like that unless you wanted it? I don't know. And uh, she got that tattoo covered up. And she got like a different tattoo that had some random fucking saying on it. But she said, that's my tribute to Kaylee. When from my opinion, it had nothing to do with Kaylee. But and then her it, in the docuseries, it shows one of her best friends, older best friends had a tattoo of like a little bird and heart that had Kaylee. Kaylee's name on it. And I'm okay. like, that's a memorial tattoo. Your little right. saying right there is not a memorial no. tattoo. And uh, I, yeah, I think she's a narcissist all about herself. Oh, a thousand and ten percent a narcissist. So that's the Kaylee <sighs> Anthony case and the truths or lies, whichever you want to believe, <laughs> of Casey Anthony. <laughs> One of the most hated women in America. <laughs> and you can see yeah. why. Oh my God. Just the, the way. Oh, okay. I'm not. Okay. I'm going to get mad again. So that's it for this episode. <laughs> Sorry not to get so mad. Um, if you enjoy this podcast, please don't forget to follow us. Leave a comment. If you're watching on YouTube, hi. Like and subscribe. We appreciate every single one of you subscribers. You can also find us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok with our username at TTATA Podcast. If you have any suggestions, comments, concerns, don't forget to email us. Our link is in the bio of all of our social media. Thanks for listening, guys. <laughs> so next week we're gonna be covering horrifying history. I'm so excited. I'm just kidding. I didn't so say excited. that. I actually didn't say that this week because uh, I was anxious about what we were gonna yeah i'm not excited about this case i was excited 
I don't know if excited is the right word. I was very interested. interested. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyways, with that, we're going to leave you with this inspirational quote. With the new day comes new strength and new thoughts by Eleanor Roosevelt. I need some new day and new thoughts right now. <laughs> and new strength. <laughs> new strength. All of it. But yeah, guys, talk to you later. See you next week. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>